Good morning. We're back. I hope you enjoyed your time of worship. How great is our God. Amen? Amen. I forgot to tell you, production team, your job is to say amen every now and then, okay? <laughs> so anyway, it is good to have some folks in the house with me next this week and next week. Uh, we're all going to be invited back in. What a great time it is going to be to celebrate again. So I just want to encourage you to look around the room. You can do that physically if you're here and uh, wave at somebody and say hi. Or if you're online, you can just type hello and greet one another as we come together uh, as we come together today and just look forward to what God is going to say and do this morning. Amen. Amen. Boy, it's more quiet out there this morning than it is when I'm here by myself. Wayne makes more noise by himself than this. So anyway, hallelujah. It is so good. Chance is logging online, man. <laughs> so, somebody said it's going to be hard to get used to not texting during church. Don't kid me. You've always texted during church. So. <laughs> Amen. Welcome, everybody. I'm glad that you're here and and uh, just so excited. We are just uh, uh, just ready. We're ready. Amen. We're ready. We're ready to hear from God. We're ready to see one another again. And, and uh, man, I've had a Friday night, I got to dinner with a couple. Last night, I got to dinner with a couple. Lunch today, I'm getting together with dinner for a couple. I'm trying to catch up. Two and a half months worth of fellowship in the next 96 hours, I think. So anyway, I, uh, I just hope that you're healthy and strong and looking forward to hearing from the Lord today. Amen. Got about another minute. We're going to wait and see, uh, see who else is going to come through the door. Hi, Michelle Kern. Hi, Kelly Strange and Rosemary Carey. I'll just shout out the locations again, all right? Michelle, there's Palmyra. I see him pacing today, Jerome. Kelly Strange, there is Rutledge, Missouri. Rosemary Carey is O'Fallon, Missouri. Dave Clifford is on 12th and Jefferson. Mark Potts in Williamsfield, Illinois. Denise O'Connell in Elmwood, Illinois. Go, Elmwood! Woo! -hoo! Sorry, Rich, I rooked it in there. All right, Barb Penn from the great metropolis of Payson, Illinois, and her better half is here with us this morning. All right, let's see, is there anybody? Deborah Love from Durham, Missouri. Bill Draghi, Canton, Missouri. Man, we don't have any of the real Long Rangers on yet today, right? All right, here we go. Let's see. Roxanne Lewis from Canton, Missouri. I think I saw your husband back there, uh, Roxanne. I know I did. But anyway, uh, let's see. Let's see. Wow, they're all locals today. That's all right. I'm happy you're all here. So uh, anyway, looking forward to just a great time in his presence today. We're going to go to the Lord in prayer as we begin today. And as we pray, I want to tell you, I, I, um, I always rejoice when we come together, online or in person. Those of you that are watching this at home on the computer, or those of you here in the room with me, and so I always want to begin with just expressing that joy. If this morning is a little different, this morning we are living in a country that is facing incredible division. I think it would be a miss of us to ignore the situation that we find ourselves in today. And um, dance and sing as if everything's okay. There are times in the church where we need to stop, times in the church where we need to reflect. There's time in the church we need to mourn and wail and repent. Today is one of those days. The word that I'm going to share this morning is very, very difficult. I'm confident, number one, I'm confident that it's, it's from the Lord. I'm also confident that it's going to cut us to our hearts. And that we're all going to have a choice about how to respond to that word. And my prayer is, is that we respond and repentance and crying out to God and asking for the healing of our nation and that we will not respond by being further divided. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come today, we thank you for the worship we've had. We thank you for one another, God. Thank you for the people in this room and the people 
watching from home. I love these people, God. I love the fellowship of the saints. Lord, as we come today, we come with open hearts. We come at a time when our nation is really so deeply divided and so much pain. Lord, we understand that we as your children are supposed to be agents of healing. So Lord, we just wanna lay our hearts bare before you today that we can be healers in the land and not part of the division. Lord, speak to us this morning. We open our hearts and help us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. The world is reeling today. Seldom do I preach from a manuscript where I've written out exactly what I want to say, but I felt like the importance of the word today demanded that I be that focused and, and disciplined in my words. Isaiah 24, verses 18 through 20 say, Destruction falls like rain from the heavens. The foundations of the earth shake. The earth is broken up. It is utterly collapsed. It is violently shaken. The earth staggers like a drunk. It trembles like a tent in a storm. I'm not one that's prone to chasing headlines. Many pastors are particularly good at reading the news and applying the word of God to it every week. That's generally not my approach. However, to ignore what is happening in our world at this moment in our country this day would be a true dereliction of my duty to proclaim the good news of the kingdom of heaven and to be a light in the darkness. Think of what we're facing today. A global pa pandemic has impacted the entire world in ways that we could have never fathomed. International tensions between the world's most populous country and the world's most prosperous country are reaching dangerous levels. And once again, America is being confronted with its long, long history of racial division. One young man was shot to death when he just went out for a jog and no arrest was made until the video went public. Another man was murdered in the street by a police officer who refused to take his knee off of the man's neck for a full two and a half minutes after he knew the man no longer had a pulse and no arrest was made until there was riot, riots and looting. Destruction falls like rain from the heavens. The foundations of the earth shake. The earth has broken up. It has utterly collapsed. It is violently shaken. The earth staggers like a drunk. It trembles like a tent in a storm. At the heart of all of this chaos is an ancient enemy. That enemy is sin. It is sin that has been sown and watered by the evil one himself that has taken peace from the earth. The cure for sin, my friends, is Jesus Christ. The only cure for what has broken us is Christ himself. He is the only solution. The method for healing 
comes through a spirit-filled church that celebrates its birthday today. Today is Pentecost Sunday, the day the church was born. Unfortunately, the church in America, at least, seems a little distracted. We're distracted by the pursuit of our rights. We're distracted by some false promise of material prosperity and a life of comfort and ease. We're distracted by the need to be entertained. In one line, I would say we're distracted by selfishness. Too often, we look at life in the world through the limitations of our own experience. COVID-19 looks much different to someone living in the rural sections of our country than it looks in our to those living in our congested cities. Racism looks differently to a black man in America than it does to his white counterpart. Religious freedom has a far different meaning to a Muslim or a Christian setting in a concentration camp in Asia than to a temporarily homebound American. Even the rioting and looting that is ravaging our cities this week appears vastly different to a person who has been the victim of a system that has consistently been deaf to their cries of injustice. Then those who could live, it would be different to them than those who could live their entire lives without a single interaction with a corrupt police officer. I stress corrupt because I have no desire to attack or bring accusation against the many officers who serve faithfully in our cities. Unfortunately, those who have responded in violence are drowning out the voices of those crying for justice. And in fact, they've changed the narrative. However, when you are tempted to discredit the message because of the method, remember this. One man peacefully took a knee in public to draw attention to this problem, to try and warn us of what was happening. He was attacked, he was scorned, and he was hated for his peaceful cry for justice, even in the church. Looking through the eyes of a black man, one might conclude that peaceful protest is not greeted any more readily than violence. I know this is hard to hear, but unfortunately, the followers of Christ have not been immune to that hatred. As followers of Christ, we should be mar far more concerned with justice for humanity. Read the word of God. Read the word of God. We should be far more concerned with justice for humanity. Than the disrespect of cloth. And if you are to answer that it is not the cloth you are defending. It is what that cloth stands for. You should also know that Jesus is more concerned about injustice towards people 
than he is with your national identity. I realize that right now there are some who are tempted to turn me off, maybe some have, and walk away. Perhaps there are some who will type their objections into the comment section of your feed. That's your right. But if you do, you will miss an opportunity to confront your own bias and prejudice and continue to view the world through your own limited experience. Destruction falls like rain from the heavens. The foundations of the earth shake. The earth has broken up. It has utterly collapsed. It is violently shaken. The earth staggers like a drunk. It trembles like a tent in the storm. We can't ignore what's happening. We can't plunge ahead as if nothing's wrong. Not the church. We don't have that luxury. We are the people of God. Regrettably, my friends, and I say this with all the love in the world, you don't know how hard these words are. But the church is more of a reflection of our culture today than a light shining in the darkness. A city set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Sadly, the evangelical church in America today has become more a reflection of a political party than of its former founder and head, Jesus Christ. Hatred is ripping our nation apart. It is hatred that is killing black men based solely on the color of their skin. It is hatred that is tearing babies in the womb of their mothers apart limb by limb by the millions. Hatred is burning down our cities even as we speak. Hatred has so divided us that we cannot even be friends with someone with a different view of the world. Hatred keeps us from looking through the eyes of another. Hatred, my friends, is driven by fear. Fear is rooted in what we do not understand. We do not understand because we will not hear what others share with us about their experience. The biggest problem with hatred is that it is deaf. Hatred cannot hear what it does not understand or agree with. And we know that deaf people cannot speak. Not clearly. If you cannot hear, your voice is muddled at best. When it comes to racism, I often hear paid people say things that are just dumb. I've said them in my own life. Five or six years ago, you've heard me tell this story. 
I had lunch one day with a black man, missionary that we support today, Willie Johnson, not having any clue that God was about to change my whole worldview. Willie invited me that day into a world that I didn't know. Willie invited me into a world that I had ignored existed. He invited me into a world that I now, none of us can, can claim doesn't exist because of cameras on phones and social media. We can't ignore it anymore, folks. We can't pretend it's not there. I heard Willie's heart. I heard his experience. Fear of even leaving home. Hatred cannot hear. When it comes to racism, I already said that, sorry. This is part of reading from a script. We don't hear because it threatens our sense of security and it challenges our view of the world. Destruction falls like rain from the heavens. The foundations of the earth shake. The earth is broken up. It has utterly collapsed. It is violently shaken. The earth staggers like a drunk. It trembles like a tent in the storm. But my friends, I'm here today to speak truth and to proclaim the good news of Jesus Christ. There is an answer. We, the church, the physical presence of Jesus Christ on the earth today, we who are inhabited by the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, we hold the answer. We possess the solution to all that is ravaging the earth today. On the day of Pentecost, the day the church was born, it is no coincidence that God gathered people from nations all over the world and different languages to come and bear witness to the birth of this movement that would change the world forever. You see, sin divides us. Pride divides us. Language divides us. But on that day, once again, it's no coincidence that God manifested himself in the tongues of his people, signifying the breakdown of all that divides us. For that moment, the barriers were gone. And he was giving us a vision of a future of unity, free from the division that comes through Jesus Christ in his church. Jesus restored our relationship with God on a cross. There, he paid for the sin that separates us from God. 
the sin that broke the image of God in us and keeps us from knowing our creator. The blood of Jesus broke that forever and restored our ability to have relationship with the God that created us and to be born again into the image he intended for us in the beginning. And it's the spirit of Christ that came to restore our relationship with one another. Because if we cannot love our brother and our sister, who we can see, how can we possibly love God whom we cannot see? The church is made of those who are disciples of Christ. It is to be characterized by love. You cannot miss that in the scripture. The defining characteristic of God's people is love or they're not God's people. Hatred is the opposite of love because hatred is selfishness, refusing to hear the cries of injustice that surround us, refusing to hear the, 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 the point of someone who has a different perspective on life than us. But love is selflessness. And it willingly stands before God and ask him to open their ears and to give them the power to speak life. Last night we had dinner with Ron and Melissa Mannion. I told them, I said, we're getting ready to go, that Saturday night, nine o'clock, and I still don't have a clue what my message is in the morning. Melissa said, what did you talk about in Bible study this morning? And I did what so many people have done to me. And I said, I can't remember. <laughs> she said, there was something in that Bible study that I really thought you needed to say to the whole church. So I went back and I looked. In Mark chapter seven, Jesus left Tyre and went up to Sidon before going back to the Sea of Galilee in the region of 10 towns. A deaf man with a speech impediment was brought to him and the people begged Jesus to lay his hands on the man and to heal him. Jesus led him away from the crowd so that he could be alone. And I mentioned this yesterday and I would say it again. Jesus wasn't interested in shows. He wasn't interested in performance. His healing were not magic tricks. He cared about people. He had no desire to put on a show for the crowd. He had compassion for a man that couldn't hear and therefore couldn't speak. He put his fingers into the man's ears. Then spitting on his own fingers, he touched the man's tongue. Looking up to heaven, he sighed and said, Ephatha, which means be open. And instantly the man could hear perfectly. And his tongue was freed so that he could speak plainly. Thank you, Melissa, for challenging me to go back.
if we were all in the building this morning, I'd be calling you all to the altar right now. I would be challenging you to come and lay your heart bare and ask Jesus to open your ears so that you can hear, so that you can hear, so that when we open our mouths, we could speak the life that this world needs. I've struggled all week to understand my response to this. I have a responsibility to the people that God has put in my care to disciple you and to help you to become more like Jesus. Jesus could not and would not be silent in the midst of what we're facing today. But I said, Lord, I don't know how to do it. I recognize it's a problem. I even reached out to a black brother as a friend and said, help me. Help me understand how. And then I read this scripture and I understand that the how is to put my face before God and to ask him to open my ears. Help me hear. Help me hear the hurting. Help me hear the pain. Help me hear those who are living in fear. Today, I'm asking God to open your ears to hear the cries of injustice. I'm asking God to engage and empower us to be the church he birthed on Pentecost. I'm asking God to send once again his Holy Spirit to come and break down the divisions between us. So if you're in the room or you're on the computer, we're not just signing off today. We have to pray. This may be the most difficult word I've ever had to preach in my life. If you do not pray, you don't have much hope for anything but anger towards me. But if you'll put it in the hands of God, you'll hear his voice. He'll open your ears and he'll give you a tongue to speak life. So rather you're in your living room or you're in this room, it's time to pray. If you're in this room, you're welcome to come to this altar. Spread out, please. You're welcome to turn and kneel there right at your seat. But we are going to pray. We are going to pray. Don't sign off the computer. Stay right here. We're going to join ourselves together and pray. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Krista, if you would just play one of those songs and we'll have a little bit of music behind us. But we need to pray. My friends, repent. Repent. Don't, don't take the attitude that I am immune to this. This is not me. We're all guilty. We're all guilty. We all play a part. Father, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, we call out to you. In the name of Jesus, we cry to you. God, break our hearts. God, open our ears. 
God, expose our own sin. Expose my own bias, my own prejudice, God. Expose my heart. Cleanse me afresh in the blood of Jesus. Purge all hatred, all selfishness from my life and from my heart. God, give us ears to hear. Give us ears to hear those who experience is different than ours. Give us ears to hear the oppressed. God, give us ears to hear that those who are crying for justice. God, it's not just a race thing. It is a race thing, but it's not just a race thing. Ah, there were people all over this world suffering injustice. They're suffering the consequences of sin and hatred and division. God, awaken your church. Forgive us for our apathy. Forgive us, oh God. Forgive us, oh God, for being distracted by entertainment, for being distracted by false promises. Oh God, for being distracted by our own selfish thoughts, vain ambitions. Oh God, we pray. Oh God, we pray. Oh God, we pray. God, we pray. <coughs> we pray. We seek you, God. We seek you, God. We're so hungry for you, God. Change us, God. Confront us, God. Confront us, God. We cry unto you, Lord. We cry unto you, God. We need you. We need you. Yes, Lord, let the perfect love of God drive out all fear in the name of Jesus. Oh, God. God. Oh, God, help us. Oh, God, help us. Oh, God, help us. Oh, God. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we bless you. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray. I pray for your church today. I pray that you would awaken our hearts. that this would be so much more 
than an emotional sprawl response to our circumstances. But that the church would recognize their need for healing, for awakening, for change. We come against the sin that divides us. Forgive us, God, for shutting our ears to the cries of the oppressed. Heal us. Heal us. Open our ears and empower our tongues to speak life. In Jesus' name. It's a little awkward being in so many different places like this, but I want to ask you to let your hearts to let your hearts grieve the bible is pretty clear that there's a time for mourning turn your laughter to mourning and your joy to gloom that's james that's not old testament that's that's the book of james Draw nigh unto God, and he will draw nigh unto you. These are serious times. These are the times we need to be committed to fasting and prayer. These are the times we need to be committed to loving one another. These are the times our hearts should be broken. Thank you to those who are in the room and those who are online today. I look forward to our gathering next week. I'll meet with you here again on this live stream at seven o'clock this evening as we talk about how we're going to open again and the things that must happen. May we always be motivated by love. I love you, church. God bless.